In this video, we're going to talk about using some different mouse events in Cypress. So the goals for this video are to use the Cypress mouse commands uh, and explore passing in some different options. And then also there might be instances in which you want to um, create a hover effect. So maybe you have some sort of action that, that triggers on hover. There's actually not a specific hover action by default or a hover command by default out of the box with Cypress. So we'll go ahead and take a look at a workaround for that. So let's go ahead and get started. So as we've been doing in these videos, we've got our project running locally and we've got our, our uh, test runner command uh, entered here and we've got our little test runner UI ready to go. So let's go ahead and write some tests. So we're gonna exclusively use the um, actions slash commands page for this. So we can actually utilize this before each, like we've looked at before. So we don't, we're not gonna be worried about fixtures in this particular video. So we can just hit it with a cy.visit slash commands slash actions. So let's go ahead and take a look at some mouse events. First, uh, we can revisit the on click command. So we can say that it triggers a popover on click. So we will, uh, we don't have to worry about the CY visit command because that's being taken care of in our for, uh, before each. So we're gonna look for our action button class and we're gonna click it. And then we're gonna use our Cypress testing library command, cy.findbytext. And we're looking for a specific bit of text in the actions popover shows, okay, this popover shows up on click. So I can, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and then in the test file, we'll paste that in. And then that should be visible. If I save this, run our test. And that works and we can see it, uh, it clicked and popped over. This popover shows up on click. Cool. Next, we can take a look at some options that we can pass in. So on that same page, there is a, a little canvas with an idea of action canvas. And from there, we can actually tell uh, Cypress where on the page to click. So we can say that it can click on different sections of a canvas. So we're gonna grab that action canvas. And from there, we're going to click on the top. Oh, this is yelling at me because it's double quotes. And we'll do the same thing. And uh, we, so we can copy this. We can paste and we can do like bottom right. And then it'll also accept um, X, Y coordinates. So we can pass in like 80, 100. And so if we run that, you can actually see these different uh, red dots are, are where the um, the options were being passed in. So you can see bottom right, you can see top, and then there was our coordinate there with the 80, 100. And so that you can see that it's uh, 80 in the X and 100 pixels in the Y, so starting from this top left area. Cool, next up, we can look at 
double clicking. So it can double click to edit. There's an area on this page that will um, activate a little, uh, like a little edit input when you double click on it. So we'll go ahead and visit that, uh, that same actions command or commands actions page, and then we'll get the class of action div. And from there, we're going to use the double click command. And when we do this, it's actually going to uh, run a little JavaScript and um, hide this action div. So we're going to check that it's not visible. And then in so doing, it's going to so it's going to hide the action div and then it's going to uh, populate the UI with um, a, a class or an input that was previously hidden with a class of action input hidden. And that element should now be visible. We can go ahead and comment these two tests out since we're finished with them and save and we'll rerun this so we can see. So we visit our commands actions. You can see here that the action div is in kind of like a read only mode and then you can double click on it. So we get the action div, we double click on it and now it transforms into that editable input. We're going to do something similar with this right click where we right click to edit. We can preview what's happening here. If we right click on this just in the UI, you can see that edit. So this next test will look pretty similar. So we can right click to edit. And this one has a slightly different class on it. It has the right click action div. It takes the right click command and similarly after right clicking on it, it should not be visible. And similar to the uh, double click, this should now have a right click class, a right click action input hidden uh, class that is now visible. So we can comment out the double click and we'll test out our right click to edit. So similarly, you can see that that's now active, but if we hover over the different parts of our test, we get that right click action div and then we right click on it. And from there, you can see the, the DOM snapshot if you look down here before and after. So before you click and after you can see that it's in read only and then edit mode. So the last thing that we're going to do is take a look at um, how to simulate a, um, a, a hover action. And so in doing this, uh, we actually want to set up something in this scripts.js file. So if you look through your directory, um, in app uh, assets JS, there's a scripts.js file, and we can see a couple of different um, uh, bits of jQuery that have been written to trigger some different actions. We're actually going to write one that will um, trigger the um, right now when you are are looking for like if you click on commands in the navigation bar, it'll drop down the the um, drop down menu. So you toggle that on and off with uh, clicking, but we're going to set it up so that when you hover over it, then you can see all the navigation li links instead of having to click on it. And this is a pretty common use case in, in uh, websites. So we can 
take a look at that where so we'll just go underneath this double click and we can write our own so we can do a little jQuery and we can find the drop down toggle and then we're just going to hover over it and from there we're going to find the uh, list item with the class of active and we're going to add a class of open so I, I know how to I know to do this just from a, a little bit of experimentation with it. There's some other kind of behind the scenes JavaScript that's built into this project. But after playing with it and it's inspecting the um, the elements and everything, I noticed that when you click on the uh, when you click on the navigation, it adds this open class to this uh, this this active class and when it has the open class that no longer makes the um, the unordered list hidden in the in the Dom so essentially this is just showing that unordered list of of links for us so now that we have this we can show how to actually uh, hit this hover in our Cypress test so saving the scripts.js file if we go back to the test file we can comment out our last right click and we can say it shows the nav links on hover. And so from here, we're going to look for an element with a class of drop down toggle. And then we're going to use the trigger command. And so trigger can be used to uh, trigger different events in the DOM. And in this case, we're going to use it for a mouse over. Then we're going to, so this, by hovering over the drop down toggle, this should hit our script to then so we're hitting this drop down toggle, we're hovering over it, and it should add the open class to our active list item. So we're getting the drop down toggle, we're triggering a mouse over, and then from there, now that the open class is added, we should be able to see that uh, list of, of nav links. So we'll get that on our list, which is uh, it has a class of drop down menu, and that should be visible. So now if we run this, we can see so we didn't click on it. Uh, and this unordered list is now visible. So what happened was we visited, we got the drop down toggle, which is this element on commands. We triggered a mouse over, which you can see with that little red dot and the before and after. And then we got the drop down menu on our list, which you can see highlighted there and you expected it to be visible. So that's a workaround. Knowing that Cypress doesn't have its own built in hover command, you can use that trigger command to trigger a variety of DOM events. And in this case, we used it for the, um, the mouse over. So in the next video, we'll actually take a look at getting all of these tests off of our local machine and automating some of these tests through GitHub Actions. So when we deploy, we can actually utilize GitHub Actions to run our tests for us and um, make the process a little bit less manual. So until that time, if you're looking to learn more, be sure to check out the blog and community pages that you see here. And until next time, have a good one.